Hi, welcome. How's everyone doing today? Today we have uh, some new buttons on the screen. If you can see, actually gave you all some new buttons to play with today. How many of you saw some new buttons? Okay, just warm up. Hang on. Remember, uh, some of you wanted to play some games, have some polls. So I'm going to play a poll today. See whether it works or not. Okay. So light is the topic for today, but we need to always discuss what we did last week. So we need a little bit of answers from you on what we did last week, if you can remember. Because you guys do HBL, and then you guys do ADA tuition. So there's a mix of topics. So I want to know whether you remember what we did on ADA, topic, uh, ADA tuition. Okay, I believe you may not have the chat feature enabled today. You might not, have, that's what I believe, but because I, wanted to play some games with your like polls and all that. So I'm trying to get a poll on. That's what took me a few minutes. So let's see if I can get the poll on. What's a poll? Okay. Let's see. P O L L. A poll is like a vote, right? So I'm trying to get that. So be patient. Okay. Otherwise, we'll go on with the lesson proper because we are five minutes into the class already. So last week we did, yes, materials. So I, I see you guys are excited by some pictures already. Okay, materials. So we want to close that chapter of materials and start on a new theme called energy today, which is light, right? So last two weeks, we have been doing a theme on diversity, which we started off in primary three, many of us. So we looked at living and non-living things. And in the living things, we looked at plants and animals. And then we looked at something important called fungi and bacteria. They form an important part in the living things area. And then the next week we went to the non-living things and that's where materials come in, okay? Materials are non-living things, right? So if we finish that, then we actually finish the theme of diversity and can move on to a new theme. And there are many other themes, right? There are cycles, there are energy, there are systems. And you have done a little bit bits and pieces over here and there for P4s. P3s, I know you only did diversity so far. So this topic today is on energy. Okay, before we go to energy, okay, let's have a little questionnaire. The poll doesn't really work very well so i'll be testing it but before that i want to just show you the picture okay so that you guys can identify as many superheroes here as possible <clears throat> okay of course some of you superhero fans will be like knowing uh, most of them but i still believe not all can name every one of them can or not? i think can because if you're a superhero fan usually you know the names of all because even uh, the dinosaur fans can name all the dinosaurs just like that at their fingertips I'm quite impressed by that also. And the dinosaur names are more typical than Marvel characters or DC comic characters. Okay, so have fun with this slide. <clears throat> and the question is going to come on who is, do you think is the strongest super hero okay let's see what i can do now since we can't have the chat button maybe we can have the voice okay so if you raise your hand i might unmute you then you can tell me who's the strongest superhero okay who wants to raise your hand and then i can unmute you and then we can see who's the strongest superhero I don't see any hands. Oh, okay. Let's see. James. Shall we pick James? James, can you uh, see a button to unmute yourself? If you can't, I have to try someone else because this is really trial and error. Today, we try to try something new, then we see if we can work on the future, future lessons. Uh, unmute. Okay. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. Okay. 
Yeah, who is speaking right now? Can you tell? Can I have your name? Please, right? Kelly or Kelly? Can I have your name? Yeah, Celis. Okay, I heard Celis. <laughs> Hi, Celis. Who's the strongest superhero in your opinion? Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. Okay, who is Captain Marvel in this picture? Is he there? Maybe I can use my pen to highlight. Maybe you describe him to me. Ah, now it's the difficult part, right? This is like English oral. You have to describe the picture to people who are listening to you without having a pen to identify. Just using your words. Tell me, whose picture is Captain Marvel? <laughs> Don't know. At least I will give someone else a try. Superman. Superman. <laughs> so Captain Marvel Superman has come in as the answer. Uh, okay. Franklin Richards. Wow, Franklin Richards. Who who just said that? James. James. Oh, James. Hi, James. Hi. Ah, yeah. Hello? Hi. 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 H
Now this time there's no Flash Dash, unfortunately, but there are Spider-Man. Because Flash did not appear in too many movies, he's still in a cartoon form. <laughs> okay, but the DC comics and Marvel stories are very strong in, in cinema in uh, Hollywood, so they actually uh, cater to the masses. So most of us are familiar with these characters. How many of them are here? Two, four, six, seven. And um, of course, I can invite all of you to name me, which you will do so very easily. But Spider Man, Superman, uh, oh, and Captain America, uh, there's Batman, Iron Man, uh, Hulk, Hulk looks strong, Thor. Uh, I'm surprised nobody said Iron Man is the strongest. That's uh, interesting because I think Iron Man is the weakest because he needs such a strong armor made of iron to protect himself. Agree? If you agree, say thumbs up. <laughs> okay? Because the rest of them don't need such a strong armor and still they are strong and they, they are mortal, you know, I mean immortal. They cannot die in most cases when they fight. Okay, especially Superman also he probably can catch the bullets fast. Same as what Dash said about Flash. Okay, so what I'm tying this discussion here about is actually to actually close the topic of last week, which is materials. We want to see see whether you guys can actually recognize what they are wearing on their bodies. And the fact that I said Iron Man could be the weakest is my interpretation of him wearing an iron armor suit on his body, taking the argument that, oh, if he needs such a strong armor on his body, then the armor is protecting him and he is not that strong. Whereas people like Superman, look at his material, he's probably just cloth and he is still as strong or he has still as many superpowers. Okay, so maybe they are stronger. Of course, Hulk is even better. He doesn't even have a shirt on. So maybe Hulk, in that argument can become the strongest superhero. So there are no right and wrong answers. It is about you being a lawyer. You bring upon your case and you argue why you think one of them that you choose is the strongest based on their material that they wear, what they're not wearing, their superpowers, and maybe a few examples of how they actually showed their prowess or their strength in a situation. So this is when you, when you grow up and you say, oh, I want to be a lawyer. Okay, you can bring upon your case because these are not true characters. These are not science. These are fictional. These are cartoons. So you cannot take them as what? Do you know what is between the difference between fiction and non-fiction? These are fiction. That means stories that are made up of in, story, in storybooks and movies. Whereas science is non-fiction. You cannot make it up. But who says we can't study them together? Okay, we do use cartoons to actually to show you non-fiction, right? That means to tell you about how the sun rises, the water cycle, and so on. We use cartoons. So you can mix them both and, and study as well because it makes life more interesting. Okay. So what is light? Today's lesson. Okay. The four points that we will cover is what is light? What are some sources of light? What does light help us to see? And does light pass through our materials? Again, I have to mention that not all of you have gone through this in school, but it's a very interesting topic which will be covered in school in the coming months. So you better pay attention. So when the light comes, you will be the expert in class compared to the rest of your classmates. Okay. Is light matter? Now, there is a poll. I told you I have a new feature today. Don't have chat, right? But so you don't have, you can't chat all kinds of funny things, but you can say yes, no. Yeah, I hear, I see three no's. Now you can click, you know, you can click yes or no. I see, then that's a poll as well. Remember the poll? I have three no's. Is light matter? And one yes. Are you, are you all able to see the numbers also? You can, right? Yeah, I think you can see the numbers. So don't copy others. Have your own answer. Good, you guys are becoming familiar with the new set of tools that I introduced today. It's a yes or no poll. I have six no's. You can change your answer, you know. That's, <laughs> but I have to say, you know, let's stop it and then we see the number. Okay. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, seven versus two. 
seven no's and two yes see this is how the poll works so i'm writing down on the screen the result okay no more answers please okay okay no more answers now so if you do not recognize if light is matter or not then we have a problem what is matter matter is anything that occupies space has mass these are the two conditions of matter right so that's why solids liquids and gases are all matter okay now based on my notes i think you can find that the answer is light is not matter because it doesn't occupy space it doesn't have mass it's not solid it's not liquid it's not a gas therefore light is a form of energy okay so we cannot study it as matter light is a form of energy many students even parents ask me the question so is light matter or is it energy is energy okay take note of this <clears throat> and energy can comprise of many things okay uh, some of you are familiar with heat we are doing light today shadows come under light temperature come under heat so we are actually talking about two forms of energy which we will do in primary 3 and primary 4 there will be more forms of energy in the upper primary but these two forms of energy have to be studied in primary 3 and primary 4 Okay, heat will come soon. First, we need to do the easier one, light. Okay, we all know light. We have light around us all the time. So, what do we have here? Sources of light. Okay, what do we have here? Let's invite somebody to speak. Raise your hand if you want to speak. Okay, Litasa, are you ready? You want to speak? Let me just unmute you. You got to tell me what you see here. The sun. Mm -hmm. I hear an ambulance near Litasa's home. Do you just the see the sun, sun Litasa? The sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go on. What else? The electric bulbs. Mm -hmm. Lamps. Mm -hmm. The stars. Yeah. That's all? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Litasa. Usha. No. <laughs> Let's find Lassia. That's fine. Who wants to participate? You can put up your hand, don't be shy. Dash or Chloe? Chloe. Chloe. Hi, Chloe. Hi. Hi. Are you in P6, Chloe? Yeah. Great. Great to have you join us <laughs> and revise through what you've been going through um, two years ago, right? So let's see <laughs> if you can recognize. Okay. Um, okay, Chloe, I have a different question for you. Just tell me which one of these items have, are sources of light. So I'm going to write down uh, sources. Um, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sources. So you are in P6, you should tell me what's the difference between a source and a non-source. Uh... Uh, light bulb is a source of okay. light. Okay. And what else? Um, the lamps is a source of light. 
Mm -hmm. The sun is a source of light. Yeah. Um, the stars are a source of light. Mm -hmm. And uh, the moon, no, right? The moon, no. Because it's, okay. it's like yeah. usually dark. It comes out in the night. Okay, it comes out in the night, but 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 it's, it's full of light. I see light on the moon at night. Okay. Um. Probably some animals are a source of light. Very like good. Fireflies. Okay. Thank you, Chloe. Some animals. Very good. Thank you, Chloe. Thank Let's you. go through. Thank you. Okay. So, what does this mean? The circle pictures are sources of light. So, P3s, okay, uh, do you all get an idea? The light must come from the object. Sun, the light comes from the object. Star, light comes from the object. Lamps and electric bulbs. Wood, no light from the object for wood, right? That's why it's not a source of light. Coal, it's not a source of light on its own, but if you burn it, it will light up, but it's not a source. Source means it must light up on its own. Uh, it must have light coming out of it. Okay, when you burn it, you might have some light. So it's not. Is it a source or not a source? Okay, depends whether you are burning it or not. Burning coal is a source of light. Now the moon is a big, bigger question mark because even Chloe said, "Oh, at night it comes out, so it's not a source of light." That's not the answer that we would expect you to say if we asked you if the moon is a source of light or not. So we leave the moon hanging there for a while. I will answer the question in the coming slides for P3s who are interested to know. But Chloe uh, asked, uh, said something very interesting, which I want to point out. I'm going to write a white pen, which is here. Can you see why I'm circling? Some animals are sources of light. And then she mentioned one example. Because she's in the higher level, by now she's very, very good at identifying the source of light animal. Which one is it? Okay, not many. Okay, one of it, the most common one. Hey, I actually have it. Look at it. The picture actually just changed. Okay, so I'm going to write down here. The, the picture is showing a firefly. Because it has its own light, then it's actually a source of light. Okay, so some animals can also come. Although all animals, most animals, even human beings like us, we don't have our source of light. Okay. Carrying a torchlight and going around is not your source of light. Is okay, the torchlight is the source of light. So that is interesting here to take note. And then we have the moon still not answered yet. So we want to answer those questions. We have to look at how light travels. Okay, light travels in straight lines, as you can see from the picture. Okay, light gets reflected. When it bounces off object, when it bounces off objects. Okay, these are the two important characteristics you need to know. So, therefore, you can see in the diagram that the light actually travels in a straight line. There's no curving, huh? there's no curving. Okay, and then another straight line. And then there's a bounce off because it hits the object. And therefore, the eye is actually seeing the box with some color or can see the box. Maybe I shouldn't say the word color, but yeah, you can see the color of the box, of course. If it's dark, can you imagine the room is dark at night? You switch off all the lights, you draw the curtains, it's completely dark. This box cannot be seen. It's not that the box is black in color. The box is yellow in color, but you cannot see it because there is no light bouncing on it because you shut off all the light sources there's no light. So you need to have light around to bounce off the object to see. So anything that in your room now, look around. Okay, if you can see that object, it's because light is bouncing off. Now, if you cannot see the object at night, tonight you try the same thing, you switch off the light, everything is dark, not a single ounce of light entering your windows, and then you try to see the same thing. Of course, you cannot see the object. That's because light is absent. It's not being able to bounce off the object. So it's not the object itself that can in have light. Okay. 
it is the bouncing one. So this one is a not a source of light. This is how you determine that at night you cannot see. Whereas sources of light, you can see that even at night, like a firefly, like a torch light, like the sun. Well, maybe we don't see the sun at night. Okay, the sun is still around somewhere in another part of the world where you are seeing the moon. Okay, and a fire. What about a fire? You can see the fire? Yes. So that those are sources of light. That's how you determine the difference between a source of light and a non-source of light. And a source of light can always be seen no matter what the condition of the room is, of the sky is, of the light condition. But non-sources cannot be seen in the dark. Okay, that's important. So the moon, we are here at the moon now. Can you see, I just replaced the box with the moon. And it's the same concept. The moon can only be seen if the sun's ray hits the moon and comes to our eye. And then we see it in, at night. If I take away the sun, I cannot see the moon. That means the moon is uh, not a source of light. It does not have its own light. It's actually a moon. Is you know what color? No? Do you know? <clears throat> I'll tell you the what's the color of the moon. It's very gray. It's very gray, the moon. Okay, I shouldn't even have those yellows. Imagine the actual moon. Those people who have gone to the moon, you'll know. How many of you have gone to the moon? I have, through the videos of YouTube. I've seen astronauts go to the moon. They step on the moon. Is it yellow, bright like the sun? Or is it dull and gray like this where I draw? Okay, dull. Okay, the moon is very dull. However, it has this reflection from the sun where the light is bouncing off, then you can see the color. This is like you have a mirror. Okay, if you, if you shine a torchlight, you can see the light bounce off. So that's the exact same concept. Okay. Now we look at those are the simplistic, um, what do you call, revision or introduction to light. Uh, that you can read a lot more in your textbook and your revision exercise books or your notes. But we have to go faster than that. So that's the essence of light. Okay. Now we have objects. Can and objects can actually have reflection or absorption or transmission depends on the type of objects. For example, some objects they can reflect light. Example. Mirror. Okay. You have all of us have mirrors at home. How many of you don't have mirrors at home? You have, right? You have mirrors. So mirrors reflect light very well. And some shiny surfaces like the, the surface of your car, which is made of metal, some metals that you have at home, like spoons, forks, all of them reflect light. You can try. Then you have objects that allow some all light to pass through versus only some light to pass through. Can you see the difference here? Can you see the circling? Yeah. What, uh, what does that mean? Some objects allow all light to pass through. Of course, you know, clear glass. That's why we make our windows out of them. So this is relating back to our materials. Remember, we did materials last week and we talked about transparency. Yeah, so these are all the transparent materials. When do you mean transparent materials? Means allow all light. Okay. Then when it allows only some light, it's called translucent. Allow some light. Now, I don't have to teach you nine-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds, this very clever, very clever children here. But you know where you guys don't know? You don't know enough examples. You see how many examples I have. We only know glass. Glass is transparent. Glass. Can you name me one example? Glass. Can you name me one example? Glass. It's always glass. What about water? Is it transparent? Can you see through? You can see nearly all light pass through water, but not orange juice. Okay, so clear water is transparent, almost clear liquids, clear plastic. Yes, plastic sheet. Again, going back to the materials of plastic, some materials are in the transparent, some materials are in the translucent. So that's why I put here clear plastic. Now, again, this is where you make a mistake. Even primary six, you make a mistake. You just type in plastic. Wrong. When you say plastic, not all plastic is transparent. But if it's clear plastic, it's transparent. 
You got it? So you have to tell me what plastic you're talking about. Because just last week in material physics, we discussed, oh, not all plastics are strong. Some plastics are not strong. Okay, can break. Some plastics are very strong. Okay, plastic bags are made very strong. Uh, some toys are made of plastic, they're very strong. Some they actually break. So it depends on the type of plastic. You know, talk about the type of plastic. So here, when you talk about transparent, whether it allows light to go through, you got to tell me it's clear plastic. That's why I say, even though you guys are very smart, you make mistakes like in this star area here. And then ask you examples of some translucent objects, the third category here. This is where you guys really fall. You like very hard to find examples. Of course, the very first example you guys very uh, familiar is tracing paper. Very, very common, very famous example. You always tell me tracing paper. Then there's glass. See, glass can be on both sides. That's why it's important to tell me what type of glass you're talking about. Is it, you don't tell me glass. The moment you say glass in your answer in your exam, straight away wrong because you have not identified the type of glass that is transparent, that is translucent, that is strong, whatever. Okay, so you have to tell me is it clear glass, is it frosted glass, and so on. Lace, what is lace? Lace is a type of material that you wear on your body, like a fabric, right? Some of you can see some parts of the skin. That means light can pass through it and thin cloth as well. Okay, so I've given you enough examples. Do not go to school and tell your teacher, I don't know. Your teacher will be asking you. Give me some examples of translucent. You'll be the first one to say lace because no one will say lace. Because everyone will say tracing paper. <laughs> okay, so, so we want to be the, the smart one there. Then we tell the classic, more classic examples that other people can't think of. So you better to take note of lace, thin cloth. Okay, and then the last one, do not allow any light to pass them. This is too easy. <clears throat> what does that mean? It's too easy means everything else that is not transparent, translucent, is or reflective is going to be what's the, what's the name for this? See? Again, most of you can't spell it. have been going through this for weeks. By now, you should know how to spell it. It is a difficult word to spell, but I'm sure Chloe knows how to spell very well because she's gone through P3, P4, P5, then P6. By now, she knows how to spell opaque. So you don't take time and practice. The more assessment books, the more questions you do, the more times the word opaque appears, then it becomes very, very easy. Okay, So it's all about practice. So we have the mirror. Right? This is called reflection. So this is the exact action of the light. Earlier we talked about the property of the light, of the object, whether it's being transparent or not. Of course, we also showed the words reflection. Did we show the word reflection? Yes. You see, it shows reflect light. Then it says allow all light. But here I'm going to take action of light is reflection now what's the other action of light transmission okay light can get transmitted <clears throat> what's the other action of light light can get absorbed what's the difference between i just it's all based on the arrows can you just appreciate and identify based on the arrows what happens to light this is the light ray what happens to this light ray it goes here one Bounce off. Oh, this is called reflection. Now the next light ray, it goes here. It doesn't get bounced off. It actually goes through the material. Oh, it's transmitted. So this is probably a transparent material like clear glass. Example. Okay, I'm not gonna say it must be clear glass, it can be. Okay. Then absorbed is light does not get through the material is opaque so where the arrow stops is right at the object so you need to draw arrows when we ask you to draw arrows to describe the light you reflected transmitted absorbed your arrows must be accurately drawn in such a way where the arrows go through or stop at the surface because light cannot go through and this is how you do that is there any more action of light oh 
okay if i say draw all three this is for the smartest student in my class okay all 21 of you are smart so this is called so let's write down the action on the light <clears throat> this is called i'm sure you are seeing it already okay let's do it together as a class so i'm going to unmute all of you it's going to be chaotic but please do it together we all say the word absorb together Ah. Oh. 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 This one? Door. Transmit. 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 Reflector, 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 reflector. The list that we've got, remember? Mom, tell me the. Yay! Okay. Okay, let's go. So that was fun. I don't know. Hearing you guys shout answers is much better than letting you chat, right? So that's why it's a test bit. Actually, all of you are having. A little bit more participation today. Good. <clears throat> okay. So we summarize everything that we have to know about materials and the properties of light. They can get reflected, they can get transmitted, they can be absorbed. All of them on the board. And then the materials, they got reflective material, transparent material, opaque material, translucent material. Good, 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 good. Okay, now put thumbs up there on the on your on your what? Check. Put thumbs up. Can put thumbs up or cannot? Cannot put thumbs up, then just go yes, 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 yes. Go yes. You can click on yes. No, somebody say no, cannot. That means this person cannot understand. Yes. Two person only say yes. Three, five, four, five, six, seven. Only five. Hey, I need to hit at least 15. Yes, then I will move to the next slide. At least 15, yes. Then move to the next slide. At least 15, yes. <clears throat> 10, 11. Cannot go more than 10 yes. That means what is happening? You don't know how to click yes. Okay, if you go to the participants, try to find it because I give you five, uh, one minute to try and find it. Okay, try and find it. That you just go to where you can find all the names of people who are on this page. Uh, especially if you're using a laptop, you probably can find it much easier. If you're using a phone, should be also. <clears throat> just go to all more options. You find all our names. You find my name. You find. Uh, what is this? Andrew's name, Lassia, Litasa, everybody's name. And then there should be some options below to show a tick, a yes, a no, a go slower, go faster, and all that, right? So you just click on the yes. Tap on the green arrow yes. Tap. Okay, good. Got more yeses. So this is important because if you can find the yes, then we can do more polls, more games, more responses, more participation. Okay, some of you are just beginning to find yes, yes, yes. Very good. Sharia just found. Pari. You see, it's become 12 yeses now. If you haven't found while I'm teaching the lesson, you can actually try and find it. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we have the summary over here. Now, this is the final slide before we go to the questions. Okay, so we're going to have light when it's reflecting, we have smooth surface versus a rough surface. So, in a, on a smooth surface, it will reflect perfectly. Let's have uh, what color shall we have? Blue. Blue, you see this blue light? This is one ray. Okay, please take note this is one ray. There is a reflection on this surface. And therefore, the reflection is very, very what equal in angle. So we need to actually draw the normal, which means to show to split the the two sides into half, so that when we calculate the angle, you see the angle here. This is angle. We can calculate angle. Those of you in math, you know what an angle. And this angle, 
are equal. If they are equal, that means the bouncing of the light is exactly symmetrical. That means the surface that you actually hit is actually very smooth. Okay, so you can calculate the angle first by drawing the normal. Normal is drawn perpendicular to the surface. Okay, all these are a little bit advanced for those of you who are trying to catch up in front of three. So, okay, just listen and you will get the hang of it when your school teacher start, starts to teach this topic on energy and light. The rest of you, point four, point five, point six. okay, you know this very well. What I mean by reflecting on a smooth surface, the angles must be equal, then you know it's a smooth surface and the light is bouncing off symmetrically. Look on the right side, it is not. So if I draw, so I need to pick up my yellow pen again, draw a normal. Can you see at this point, the normal is probably like that. This one, the normal is probably, see, like that. It must be according to, see this side, the normal is like this. The normal means perpendicular to the surface. And you see all the angles are not equal. This angle is not equal to this angle. Okay, the angles on the left and the angles on the right is not equal because it's bouncing off on a rough surface. So, so it's all chaotic and not smooth. So that will be the difference for light that bounces on smooth and rough. And that's why a mirror can reflect your face correctly, showing your eyes, your nose and mouth in the exact position that they are in because there's a smooth reflection. Whereas if you go to a rough surface like paper or some rough, rough frosted glass, the bouncing off is so erratic or chaotic that there is not a smooth image for me. So we cannot see our face as clearly, just like on water. When you go to swimming pool, also you can see some kind of image because it's not very smooth, all right? So like I said, you will get the hang of this slide soon, but we do some questions, okay. Okay, the upper primary students who are with me, this is too easy. So bear with me for the first few slides, maybe the second part of the questions. I know we have about 10 or 11 questions. We try to get through them as quick as possible. Like question one is so easy. Question two is also so easy, okay. Question one, what is the answer? What's the answer? Very easy, right? Because just now Chloe helped us. Which of the following is a source of light? Uh, very, very easy for you to say moon. So sometimes you are you are torn between these two, right? Moon and the candle. Of course, yellow leaf is not and orange is not. So we already identified why moon is not a source of light because it depends on the sun to reflect. Okay, so this one is the source. So answer is A. Since all of you are very good at this, then B, you can just shout out the answer. I'm going to unmute all of you just for fun. Shout out the answer. B, 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 Yay! Okay, okay. No need. <laughs> okay, so answer is B. I didn't hear anything else. Okay, next question. Now, here it's where it's more technical. You have to find out what is happening with the lines. Remember the very first slide, we actually drew a box where the light came from the torchlight, bounce off the box and go to the eye. The second one was the sun's ray bounce off the moon and go to the eye. Now, whenever you want to see something, the ray must always go to your eye. So that's the first rule. So I'm going to draw on the left hand side. When you, if you're able to see a book, you see, can you see my red line I draw on the left hand side? Okay, always, always have the line going to your eye, then is correct answer. If any other go, arrow going out of your eye, wrong answer, okay? Because light has to fall on the object and come to your eye. So looks like A is wrong, right? Because of this arrow, is going the wrong direction. This is correct. Here, there is no arrow coming because they're asking which of the following explain why Jane can see the book. No arrow to the eye, so wrong. This is also wrong because of the direction. Okay, C is correct. B, again, the arrow is wrong. Okay, 
So you need light to come to your eye. So that's why I only picked the only the red arrow that I drew you know, on the left hand side here. You know. So where does the light come from? The light comes from the lamp. Also comes from the top, and the arrow must be this way, and the arrow must be this way. Okay. There will be another question exactly like this, so we can actually have another practice. This is for you guys to take note of how to identify the ray diagram. Okay, very important. Always asked. Another common question always asked, okay? Reflection of light from a mirror, especially in a blind corner, you cannot, car one cannot see car two, just because the road is constructed in a curve, cannot see. So you need to put a mirror so that car one, when he's driving, he can see car two, and car two can see car one. So which position must I put the mirror so that driver in car one could see car two or the other way it should be the same actually. <clears throat> so you only need one mirror, you should be able to see both. So draw a straight line. I should use red now. Draw a straight line connecting both the cars. So the driver is sitting inside, he can see the car because it bounces off the mirror C. Whereas if it bounces off here, it can bounce off. Okay, let's erase this. Let's say A. It bounces off here and then it will go off here. Right? Because you need to be equal. Remember? Remember this? Equal angle. Yeah. So you will cannot, the car two still cannot see. So that's the reason why A cannot. B also, if the light goes here, it can't even go because it's the surface of the mirror is here. It can't even hit the surface of the mirror because it's behind. So cannot also. D is totally out also. D is mirror. Of, D, you see, you can have light go here and it bounce off. It goes here, it bounce off. Again, it doesn't go to the other car. So the only mirror that connects both the cars is C. <clears throat> now, this one is about, see, these are all the things that we discussed in the first half an hour in the notes. So the questions relate to them because these are the only questions on light that we can ask you in primary three and primary four. So there is no running away. These are all the examples of questions that I picked up for you that can appear. So if you are going to be uh, very good in answering this question, then you have no problem with this slide. You can say back up, say I'm very good in light, I'm going to revise other topics. Of course, other topics like fungi and bacteria are difficult. Remember? Okay, Sally wanted to find out how the thickness, how thick this object is. Okay, that means how thick of the object, okay, the thickness of the object affects, remember, affects the amount of light. So there are just two, so, so thickness, I'm going to write down, please follow what I'm writing down, will affect what? The amount of light. Thickness of the object. Now, this is what you must measure. You must measure how much light gets through by changing the thickness. You change it. Okay, you have a thin book, then a medium thick book, and a very thick book. And then you see how the light is blocked. So you measure. So because you measure, remember what was, what's the name given by this? This is a independent variable. This is a dependent variable because the amount of light will depend on the thickness. So you have, see the star here? One you measure, one you change. The others keep constant all the time. Fair experiment again. We've done this many, many times. Which of the following variables should be kept constant? As for a fair test, which of the following should be kept constant? Okay, which one must you change? Always think about which one must you change. I must change the thickness. Here I am. Can you see my arrow? I must change the thickness. So there, thickness must change. So can you keep it constant? The question asks, which one must it kept constant? Okay. Is it constant? No, you must change the thickness. So therefore, B is wrong. B is not constant. B is change. So that's why. It cannot be the answer. The rest, the material of the object, the amount of light from the torch, from the torch, okay? Some of you chose C as it, can, it must be measured. This is measured. No, this is not what you measure. You measure here. <laughs> so let's look at the diagram. All of you look on the left-hand side. This is where you measure the light sensor. Then here, the amount of light coming from the torch must be the same. You must put the same number of batteries, use the same torch, same torch same amount of light, same number of batteries, just use the same torch. Don't keep changing the torch. Otherwise, different amount of light will go through. Then you'll think, oh, 
That's because of the object. Remember, we want to test the object, so we don't change the other stuff. So, torch must be the same, which means the same amount of light. And the distance between the torch and the object. Okay, we are not measuring any shadows here. Okay, we are not measuring any shadows. Some of you know shadows, we must change the distance here. We keep it the same because what are we testing? The thickness only, whether the thickness affects. So only the book or the object becomes thicker, thinner, thicker, thinner, thicker, thinner, but nothing to do with the distance. So the distance must be kept the same. So therefore, all of them must keep the same except B. So answer is A, C, D. Okay. <clears throat> a data logger was used to measure the amount of light passing through three different materials exactly the same as what you just did. Okay, what does that mean? Material H has the least amount of light passing through. Because look at the line here. This is the amount of light only below 10. Okay, so let me give you a number, 5. Here is about 15. Here is about 35. So the most light is going through J. If most light going through J, most light going through J, that means it's the most transparent. Okay, this is the most light going through. So J must be like glass and is it opaque plastic? Cannot. Writing paper cannot. Wooden plank cannot. Then H is the least light going through. Must be opaque. <clears throat> Right? So, go to H, must be opaque, cannot be clear glass. Cannot, cannot. Wooden plank can. Okay? Here, clear glass can. Writing paper? Okay, can, because it's in between the opaque and clear. Can? That's it, answer A. Okay, all of these are very similar, but it's a different, different example of the same concepts. Again, you have light, you have material, you have sensor. Can you see? Again, same thing. Let's look at the diagram. You measure. You measure the light, amount of light here. Amount of light. Where's the source of light? Here. Where's the material? Here. <clears throat> it's going to block the light, right? Block by how much? We don't know. So, Julie finding out whether this not thickness, this is totally different material. That means she's going to choose PQ, that means uh, maybe a piece of wood, a piece of glass, a piece of plastic. So PQRS, she puts in there and blocks up most, which one will block up most of the light? Okay, so she places it there. So which variable should he keep the same and same again constant? So let's look at change. Okay, she wanted to find out if the material affects the amount of light, remember. So we measure amount of light. We change the type of material. Remember earlier we changed the thickness. Now we change the material. That means the thickness must be the same. So this one must change, right? So therefore type of material, the answer D will be cancelled because this one you must change. It's not kept constant. The question is here, which one must she keep same? Brightness of bulk keep same. Thickness of material keep same. Position of light sensor keep same. Type of material change. Okay, that's the only thing you must change. If you don't change, then her experiment cannot work. She must change the time material. Change from P, then change with Q, then change with R, change with S, then she can. So that's why D cannot be the answer here. Same thing as earlier. We just play a bit, uh, a bit of about the independent and dependent variable. So which one is independent? Which one is de dependent? Mm. Andrew, are you awake? Can I ask you, Andrew? Yes. Which one is independent uh, variable here? Which one is independent variable? Which one is dependent variable? Is it the material or the amount of light? <laughs> Amount of light is, I've written down the answer already, just have to read. Which one is independent? Material. Material. Which one is dependent? Amount of light. 
Thank you. Okay. All right. This one is similar to the car. See, I said the same concepts will be tested over and over again, but use different people, different object, different thickness, different material, and then the same thing comes over. So this one, place, mirror was placed to prevent people from colliding with each other, just like the car example. But question can change a bit. Which of the following properties of light is used in the above situation? Oh, the very first slide we discussed today was property of light. Light travels in straight lines. Light can get reflected. So remember, light travels in straight lines. Light can be reflected. These are the two properties of light, which helps in this situation as well, because light can only travel in this straight line. Okay. Straight line, right? So there must be a bouncing off point. The angle must be the same and so on. Then you can see each other. Same goes for the other person seeing the other person. Okay. Whether it's Tom sees John or John sees Tom. Okay. Now, light cannot pass through an opaque object, hence forming a shadow. We are not talking about any shadows here, opaque object. We're talking about mirror and reflection. So this property is not used in this situation. Remember, the question says, use in this situation i'm going to put a star here for the keyword in this situation light does not have mass it's not used in this situation light does not have mass remember we said light is a form of energy does not have mass or does not occupy space yes that's true this is true but it does not apply here does it apply here no okay this is Light cannot pass through an opaque object, hence forming a shadow. Yes, this is true also. But does it apply here? No. Okay. So therefore, only B and C applies to this diagram, this situation, where light travels in straight line. Therefore, we put a mirror where both of the light can travel in straight line from their eyes to meet the mirror. And also, we use the concept that mirror can help to reflect light. So B and C are the two reasons why okay, they are the properties we we talk about in this question although all four of them are true okay this is very very difficult question if you do not know the keywords which is the keyword above situation not for everything so in the exam this is how we try and catch you like um, try and put a question where you are supposed to read the question carefully if you did not read the question carefully you will fall into the trap and make a mistake Number nine, shows the path of light from object X to Y. Yes, we haven't done any question there. Remember we did reflection, transmission, then what? What's that? What's, what are the other things? Reflection, light can get reflected, can get transmitted. And one more, remember I unmute all of you and ask you one more word. Who can tell me? Okay, let's unmute all. <laughs> What's the word here? No, I mean, I mean. Opaque. No, no, not opaque. That's your material. Yeah. Translucent. Hello, everyone. Who oh. watched the slide? So yeah, next time I won't yeah, yeah. Okay, very bad all of you. No one gave me the answer. So next time I'm not going to play this game on you all. I'm just going to go and pick someone and tell me the answer now. Okay, the, the naughtiest one. I'm going to pick the naughtiest one. Okay, next time I can see who's the one making the most noise. Uh, giving me monster sounds and dinosaur sounds and I'll call them to answer one by one. How about that? Okay, you want to do an answer together, right? Okay, so you see the right hand slide, uh, right hand side, I already written down. You told me answers for, I want, I want to fill up this blank here. Okay, let me choose another color. The blue color let blank. Can you see the blue color blank? I want the answer for this blue color blank. Now, many of you did not tell me. 
You told me it's transparent, translucent, opaque. Wrong, because that's for the material properties. This is light is, light can get reflected, can get transmitted and can get You forgot, right? Remember? You see, okay? This is the three types. We can get reflected, transmitted, observed, and material also. Now I'm going to give you a green color line. There's one more missing, one more. Material can be transparent, can be translucent, can be opaque, can be Who's ready to answer me? Hi, Pari. Let's unmute you, Pari. Hi. Hi. Hi, Pari. Let's go and I will help you along. What should go into this uh, green uh, green uh, blank? Hi. So, Pari, tell me. Are you seeing the slide? Huh? The slide. Are you seeing the yeah, slide on the? Can you see any yes, word that is written in green? Yeah. What is it? Reflective. Yes, because a material can be transparent. It allows all the light. Can allow some light, which is translucent, can block all the light, which is absorbed, but can also reflect, right? So that material is reflective. So what is the example of the reflective material? I think the answer is B. Yeah, that is for the question. I'm asking the answer. Uh, give me an example of a reflective material. You go and stand inside the toilet and you reflect yourself. What material? Mirror. Mirror. Yes, very good. The material okay. is glass. Which, yeah, no, the glass is not the material. It actually, it's mirror because it's a silver surface. Okay, so yeah. So based on that answer, some of you also are. You know the mirror that is inside the toilet? Is it glass or is it mirror? Okay, is it glass or is it mirror? If glass, say yes. You can you can click the yes button right now. Is it glass? You say no, the one in the toilet is not glass, then you say no, it's not glass. So very simple. Right? You go into your toilet, you see a mirror, right? Is that mirror a piece of glass? Uh, then you say yes. Litasa, you're clicking too many times. Okay, leave it. Okay. If it's not glass, you say no. That's all simple. Okay, let me answer the question after you give me your answers. You just find the yes button, click the yes. Okay, some of you still have not found yes and no buttons. Okay, good. 10 of you, 11. It's just below where you're supposed to be able to check that all the participants' names are, where you can uh, find the video mute button. Yeah, okay, very good. Let's move on. Okay, most of you say, yes, it's glass. Very good. That's why when you hit it, you can break it, right? It's glass. But the glass has been coated with a reflective material, like, okay, silvery material that can reflect. So actually, it's a piece of glass, yes that is coated with a reflective material, then we call it a mirror. So essentially, the backdrop of the mirror is actually glass, okay? Good. What question are we on now? Number, oh, did we answer the question, number nine? Pari said answer is B. Am I right? Which of the following object correlation shows what X and Y are? Okay, B, very good. Answer B. Okay, let's go. Going to finish already. Two more questions. Okay, or three more. Okay, what is which of the following best represents W X Y? You can never run away with this classification type of thing. Like I said, fungi, bacteria, we saw classification. Materials, we saw classification. Today we are in light. Yet you see classification. Classification is all nothing but you have something at the top and then you come down into two categories and then break it down into two categories and then try to identify what and then those categories above actually determine their properties right so z 
has two properties. They allow light to pass through and they have an indefinite shape. Y has a definite shape. Okay, on the, on the left, for W, okay, this uh, Tanaraja Tesegar, very naughty. So I'm going to call him to answer my question now. Because he's playing with a lot of buttons, I can see. Hello, this is like a classroom. I can see what you all are trying to do. Okay, so don't try and play because I'm the host. I can see everything. And then later I can call the naughty ones. So, okay. So do not allow light to pass through. Or allow light to pass through is the first characteristic of property. And then you need to know whether it's definite shape or definite indefinite shape. So what is, let's look at W first. Okay, shall we? Let's pick up a red color pen. It's the clearest here. W first. The rest, let's erase. Let's look at W. It does not allow light to pass through. So all of these allow light to pass through. Frosted glass allows light, but this one, the rest don't allow light, right? So it's good. So it can be mirror, ceramic mark, or pencil. But it needs to have a definite shape. Mirror, ceramic mark, pencil also has a definite shape. So, okay, good. Now, X. So we're done with W. Now, X. So let's erase and go to X. X is does not allow light to pass through, but water allows light to pass through. Okay, the rest don't allow very good. And it has indefinite shape. Milk, mud, coffee, all has indefinite shape. Okay, can. Okay, now let's look at Y. Allow light to pass through. Cardboard don't allow. Frosted glass allow. Tracing paper allow. Allow little light. Oh, little light. So this both of these can. Oxygen allow all the light, so cannot. Because it allows all light. So cannot. Understand? Because we are talking about little light. So it must be translucent. And finally, Z must be translucent and also in definite shape. So allows little light to pass through. All of them allow little light to pass through. All of them have indefinite shape. So all of them can be the answer. Fog, water, haze. In fact, water allows all light to pass through. Water allow or don't allow? Water allow. But it's wrong because you have indefinite shape. Okay, so which one is the answer? Answer is C, right? Because that's the only one that doesn't have a cross. So let's double check the answer. Pencil, definite shape, does not allow light to pass through. Coffee, does not allow light to pass through, but it's indefinite shape because it's a liquid. Here, frosted glass is definite shape, so solid. Here is the liquid. So when it's indefinite shape, it must be a liquid or a gas. When it's a definite shape, it must be a solid. And that's all. The rest, you know, very easy. Study the diagram carefully. Which ray of light when falls on a mirror will show the path of the reflected light correctly? First, you have to draw the normal where the ray hits. Where is the ray hitting? Right here. This is the contact point here. So we draw a normal. A normal means perpendicular to the surface. And then there must be an angle. So angle, I will draw, let's say black. Angle. This angle is maybe, say, I'm just going to give an example. Angle A, 30 degrees. So the other angle must be 30 degrees. So is it A or B? or C, which is 40 degrees. You know what I mean? This, let's draw. So this is 30 degrees. This is 20 degrees. Then this is A, this is B. See? So I want the exact equal one. Then the other one is longer, so it's 40 degrees. This is C. If I pull it out, this is how it looks like. So I have to choose B, which is 30 degrees. You can go and measure which one is the exact same angle. Here I'm giving you 30 as an example number, which is not supposed to be. You can use a protector to go and measure and also use your sense of judgment to see which one looks closer to the one that is on the left. So answer should be B. Look at diagram, which of the following ray diagram shows why can't Ramli can see the car. Hey, this is exactly the same as question three, remember? 
so you i don't have to take too long question three you must have the arrow coming to the eye number one condition you must have the arrow this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong all the arrows are going to the cup this one is coming to the cup coming to the cup from the light so therefore answer is c Ta-da! next one Open-ended, just for the sake of it, most of it were MCQ because light actually is easier to ask MCQ. If we ask you in structure, we will have to ask you to draw. Okay, so the moon is a non-luminous object. Okay, what is the term non-luminous object? That means a non-source of light. Remember we talked about source and not a source. Okay, so if it's, not, it's a source, we call it a luminous object anything that is own light and a non-luminous object so the moon is not a source it comes under here complete the ray diagram you know to show the drawing light rays to illustrate this now very easy you've already seen this this is where you are okay litasa estel felix jie lasia litasa pari Ketang, Kui Chiang, Joshua, all of you are standing on earth. Can you see? And that's how you see the moon. So at night, when you see the moon, it's because the sun does exist somewhere, shining the light. You just because you cannot see the sun doesn't mean the sun is not around. It's there, shining the light, and you can see the moon. So identify the light source in the diagram over. Is it the sun, the earth, the moon? Okay. Why are we able to see the moon while standing on Earth? Just describe what you draw. Okay? Because the sun's rays are reflected of the moon to reach the Earth. Okay, I'm just explaining what I draw on top, and that's all the answer. One more, very easy. This is also very commonly asked. Okay, all ready to end the lesson. Next week we will do, we will do blue or orange. Shall we do blue or orange? Okay, if we do blue. We are on light. That means we have to go on to shadows. Okay, then after that, then we can go to orange in the following week. So during the school holidays, the lessons are still going on because we want you to continue to learn. You don't have much HBL, which means you have a little bit more time and more energy to do more lessons because I want to continue to keep you guys on your toes for science. When you go back to school, you find everything. Hmm, this is too easy for me. Okay. Other than that, if you have ideas, dash. Today, I actually started a little bit of polling because you always say we should do polling. There are other ways of polling, which I will try to think of during the week to make it more exciting. Today, we took out the chat session. We started a different type of polling. We allowed everybody to speak. Well, nobody wanted to tell the right answer. You all want to shout. Maybe I should take it out. So please cooperate if you want more fun items inside the lesson. And you, if you have ideas, okay, Dash told me. And then, of course, I incorporated the Marvel today to actually to deal with the materials of last week which also was last week's idea. So if you have a new idea, I'm going to incorporate the lesson. So you can WhatsApp me the idea. Nobody is WhatsApping me the idea. So then I will do my own idea. If you have your idea, Dash, your idea was to let you have to present your project. Okay, so give me some ideas on what are the projects that you guys can actually do and actually show. If you can do that and you are really cooperative, then we can actually allow you to share your screen and everybody can see your project and we can let you talk for about two minutes. Okay, so, but if you are coming to class just to shout whenever I say that all of you are unmuted, then it's going to be a pointless exercise. So, be prepared to have fun and share and also cooperate. Then we can have very nice lessons every week on Wednesday. Yeah? So, if you have ideas, Dash, you already have your ideas. A lot of them. WhatsApp me, um, Joshua, okay, Andrew, Celis, Chloe, Chloe, okay. You are in P6, is very good because you just joined us. You will be learning things to prepare for your PSLE. We do have a PSLE revision package up on our website for you to sign up if you want to take 
advantage of the PSLE package, tell your parents that we have released a PSLE revision package. P5, you can use that package too. Okay, last year, Litasa, Chie, Jubi, Felix, all of you are welcome to uh, set me anytime to have some ideas for next week's lesson. Next week, we're going to do, let me tell you, it's going to be shadows, right? It's going to be shadows. So if you have ideas for shadows, you can WhatsApp me. Maybe you can show me a shadow that you are interested in showing me. For that, you'll need to switch off the lights. You'll need, you'll need torch light and so on. It's going to be fun if you have access to these items, okay? Can? All right. We will leave this room now and say bye-bye. Take care, guys. See you next week.